Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Town of Lexington Planning Commission meeting. This is our normal monthly meeting. It's being held at Town Hall at 8 a.m. Wednesday morning, March 21st, 2016. This meeting is being broadcast live and a recording of this meeting will be aired on the Town's Information Channel several times during the week. I am Frank Berry, the Vice Chair of the Town of Lexington Planning Commission. The other pl Planning Commission members present are... Good morning, Sammy Hendricks. Good morning, Jeannie Michaels. Good morning, Roscoe Kaufman. Good morning, Lisa Gibson. Good morning, I'm Jamie Fight. Good morning, I'm John Bartlett. Good morning, I'm Brooke Wool. Good morning, I'm Kathy Manus, Town Council. Good morning, I'm Ron Williams, Town Council. Parkson, uh, Parkson Street. Parks and Sanitation. You're more than Charles Miles, Billy Bishop. Where's Ray Gazo planning a building? Randy Edwards, Transportation Director. Good morning, John Hansen, the Director of Light and Safe. I'm Karen Hander, Assistant Municipal Court. At this time, I would ask Commissioner Gibson to see the leaders in the invocation. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time to be here. We thank you for the changing of the season. We thank you for those that protect us every day and that serve our country and protect us that are away from their families. We pray that you bless them and give them protection. Give us wisdom and guidance today as we plan for our town and for our future. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Please join me in the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I think this is my once, one time a year I get to do this. I think this is my, this is my, I think it is my second time this year. Mm -hmm. I'm a little rusty. So we go. Um, you have the minutes in your package. I hear a recommendation. Motion to approve. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second. Sammy Beecher. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Unanimous. We have no public presentations. Uh, old business. Let's go right into the new business. Uh, first order of business site plan approval for mixed use plan development located near the intersection of North Lake Drive and Old Cherokee Road. John. Good morning. Uh, Hagen Engineering is requesting approval for a mixed use project that includes 234 unit, uh, a 234 unit apartment complex and two commercial out parcels. The project encompasses 24.4 total acres with 19 and a half acres for the apartments, 1.8 acres for the out par for out parcel number one and three, uh, just over three acres for out parcel two. The project is being pursued as a planned development because conditions related to wetlands and stream buffers on the site make it difficult for the apartments to meet the traditional buffer setback and parking requirements for apartment complex <coughs> or for an apartment complex. Um, and you'll note in your package, I provided you this map which shows the stream buffers and the wetlands that are on there. Kind of gives you an idea of what that, what they're uh, dealing with on that that from that aspect the project will be uh, accessed by one primary driveway from North Lake Drive and a secondary driveway through out parcel 2 um, ostensibly for residents or service or emergency vehicles um, a traffic impact study was not completed by the time when I mailed this to you it has been completed since that time um, but there is no information at this time about the type of commercial projects being planned for the outpost. Uh, uh, their traffic engineer is here, and I'm sure he can <coughs> update you on what their proposals are. I believe what their proposals are is consistent with what Randy has talked to them about with two diesel lanes into both of the driveways. Um, 
the other thing that I think that you all should consider is that requiring the commercial out parcels to utilize the shared driveways with the apartments, um, which I also believe that is part of the traffic impact study as well. <coughs> For the project to be approved in its current configuration, the property will need to be annexed with the appropriate zoning classification <coughs> and a planned unit special overlay. And the uh, developers, Hagen <coughs> Engineering property owners are all here to, I believe they have a short presentation this morning on what they're proposing and yeah. answer any questions. Will you please state your name for the record? Sure will. Um, my name is Brantley White. Uh, good morning. Um, I am the developer for the apartment portion of this uh, proposed project. I'm with Armore Residential uh, out of Greensboro, North Carolina. We are developers and property managers for projects that span through much of North and South Carolina. Uh, the proposed multifamily piece of this project is a 234-unit Class A apartment community, hopefully to be called Armour at the Lake. Uh, I'm not sure about the slides at this point. We have, can we go to the next one, please? Uh, this is a slide of the rendering of our building elevation. Uh, the, the planned exterior materials uh, will be hardy siding and brick. Uh, if you can go to the next slide, please. Uh, the community amenities will include an elite fitness center, a resort-style saltwater pool, a community grilling pavilion, a fully equipped playground, a complimentary Starbucks coffee bar, a high-tech business center, and free Wi-Fi for our residents. The unit appointments uh, will include granite countertops, stainless-style appliances, nine-foot ceilings, designer cherry cabinets, crown molding, walk-in closets, and garden tubs with tile surrounds. Uh, we are excited to potentially build and, and own long-term here in Lexington, as well as to contribute substantially to the tax base for the town and the county. Uh, if approved, we will build a high-quality project that future residents will be proud to call home. At this point, I'll turn the presentation over to our civil engineer, Barrett Hagen, with Hagen Engineering, and then our traffic engineer, Mike Ridgeway, and we can answer any questions you might have. Good morning. Uh, my name is Barrett Hagen with Hagen Engineering. I did the uh, site plans that you guys have seen. Um, wanted to touch on a couple things. Um, we've got a, a color site plan here, and, and the purpose of this was to demonstrate um, the open space that we we're going to have on the on the project. One of the um, the, the things that we were trying to um, be relieved from is a 150 foot setback. The the 150 foot setback would push um, the project down toward the existing wetlands, and we are trying to get um, amenities for our, for the, for the residents and a density that will support the amenities. Um, we have left a considerable amount of buffer between us and our back property line. And from that back property line, it is still a, a good ways away from any other um, usable land. All of the land in the back there is um, stream and wetlands. Um, can you go to the, the next slide? Okay. Uh, the next point that I wanted to raise is the parking. Um, we are asking for a reduction in parking spaces um, required by the ordinance. Um, the ordinance uh, requires 268 spaces. And what I did was, I, on the first chart here, um, I've shown several municipalities in South Carolina and compared our project to what they would require for parking. So you've got uh, the town of Lexington, Columbia, City of Greensville, Greenville County, Charleston, and Mount Pleasant. Uh, Lexington and Columbia are, are the same, but the other, um, the other municipalities require less parking. And the reason I bring this up is because we've done several projects um, in North and South Carolina, and I realize that every municipality has their own parking requirements, but I wanted to give you an idea of, of the amount of parking that we've been providing on recent projects. Um, 
the first uh, line on the second table shows the number of bedrooms that we've we've got as, as 426 and the number of parking that we're providing at 431 which gives us a little bit more than one space per bedroom uh, typically uh, when we're looking this, at this internally, that's usually our max, our ceiling of amount of parking that we provide. And the reason is for market rate apartments, um, the residents are not on the same work schedules. Um, they're not all at home at the same time. Um, also, bedrooms are being used by uh, <coughs> residents that aren't of, of driving age. So we usually use that ceiling of one space per bedroom and then kind of figure out our market and work down from there or we work with the municipality and determine how many parking spaces they require. So as you go through the different projects um, that Ardmore, uh, this developer has done recently, you can see that we only have one other project um, that's in, in Bluffton, South Carolina that, that has that one-to-one -one ratio. So we'd like for you to consider this when, when you're looking at the project as a whole for our request for um, reduced parking. Um, I think that Mike Ridgeway is here and he can address uh, traffic. Okay. Good morning. I'm Mike Ridgeway with SRS Engineering here in, in West Columbia, Lexington County. Um, we did the traffic study I coordinated with Randy Edwards. Um, one of the things that became apparent early on was that two accesses would be required for the project. Um, the first access aligns with Home Depot, the, the access drive for Home Depot, which is what we would prefer. We prefer aligned <coughs> intersections. Um, the second access would occur about 500 feet away between Home Depot and Old Cherokee. We did end up recommending uh, right turn deceleration lanes at both access drives, even though they're technically not warranted based on DOT standards. But one reason we did that was the commercial component is somewhat unknown and we thought it would be a good idea to go ahead and have the, the right turn deceleration lanes now. Um, another reason for that was we expect a lot of our traffic to be oriented um, to 378 in Columbia and so they would make a left out of the site make a right onto Old Cherokee. Well we expect a lot of people to come home that way as well. So they would come down Old Cherokee, make a left onto North Lake Drive and a right to the project. Um, there already is a, a center turn lane within North Lake Drive. Um, and the delays at off-site intersections were, were fairly minimal for build conditions. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have specifically. All right, one question. One question. Uh, you just made a statement about traffic coming home, mm -hmm. coming down Old Cherokee, turning the left there. Yes. That would probably require getting a left turn signal there, wouldn't it? Um, we did not. That's a fairly small movement today. Um, there's not a lot of people that come down Old Cherokee. Um, we did not recommend that in the study. Most of the traffic that comes down Old Cherokee either makes a right towards the dam or goes straight across, but there's not a whole lot of left turns back towards Lexington. But when the apartments go in there, there's going to be a lot it, more traffic. It certainly will increase, I, and I can give you those numbers. Um, currently, there's 82 that make that movement today, and then in the future, we will add 43 to that in the afternoon. So that's certainly something that could be considered, and that's a pretty easy fix, but the study did not identify that as a, a need. One question we had um, also is the desail lane at the second entrance, 500 feet away, yeah. and that existing driveway. Mm -hmm. Have you taken that into consideration? How um, is going to impact? I have I have not looked at the specifics of that. Um, it's a it's a residential driveway, correct? Isn't it a very minor driveway? Um, and typically those can be worked out. I mean, our deceleration lane will be 100 feet with a 180 foot taper, but I've not looked at exactly how that would fall with that other driveway. Okay. All right. Now you said a reduction in parking spaces. John, what is currently required and what are they asking to reduce to? Well, um, 
Because I'll be honest, I couldn't see that slide very well yeah. with the parking. I, mean, <laughs> I don't know if you have any handouts of that. Okay, sure. The, uh, rather than looking it up, I'll make sure I quote it to you correctly. Uh, they're required to provide two spaces for one and two bedroom units and three spaces for three bedroom units. Um, so there are 234 units. That would be 498 spaces that they would be required to, based on the breakdown that they've submitted to the plan. And how many are shown on the plan? Uh, 445. Asking for 430. That's fine. That's what you got right here. Total parking permits provided 445. So it is 445 is what? <coughs> I just couldn't I couldn't see it there from the slide very well. Oh, okay. So it shows the amount of bedrooms and then our parking excluding the garages and then our ratio of parking per bedroom. And it's comparing to comparing other projects. We can also give you the total units of parking and total 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 parking and all right, He's thank you guys. He's going to make some coffee for us real quick. Um. <coughs> Do we have any yeah, <coughs> question on the, on the site plan? The uh, connectivity of the two parcels that I'm seeing here that's part of the put. How about the connectivity to the lower area down the other piece of property down the corner? of Cherokee and North Lake Drive. There's actually a stream between us and that piece of property. And so we've stopped our development at that edge of that stream. So to get to that from internally would require a stream crossing. So there's no intentions to connect those properties at all to this property? No, sir. What about the connectivity of the three parcels that are not currently included in the PUD. Well, I mean, I think that that's an issue for that landowner that down the road, but I think it would make total sense for the secondary entrance to also access their property. But that's something that we haven't addressed with them because we're just not involved with them in the, in the purchase of this property. So you're not purchasing those three parcels with the house? We are not. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Well, they, they not, the PUD's not in it, these other parcels. Yeah. But we're, I think further back, you're asking us to annex those three pieces of property at this time, correct? Yeah, so if you want to pull up that site plan. We're not actually annexing these three. Green. Right, it's, it's the, I've got a larger plan here. We can look at it. All right. So, yeah. the, the two dark green out parcels we are asking to be asked at this time. The one that's slightly north of that, which I think is the one you were referring to, is not part of the annexation. If that's what you're asking, I might have misunderstood. Yeah, that's the question. <coughs> I, I like everything about the, the, the site plan, the site plan. I see where it, and you include the two commercial pieces to be part of the PUD, for it to be a PUD. Uh, I, I think our only question is, and we like the deceleration lane, we like the parking, we like everything about the whole project. Our question is the, the other parcels that aren't in your design, uh, and I know the owners here maybe can answer this later but uh, today, but uh, you know, it would be good if we could see a master site plan for the whole works on what's going to happen from a, from a traffic flow and in connectivity and uh, 
it just, it just makes sense to know what's going to happen. You don't have to know what's going to be built there or anything, just know the parcels, how they're going to be inclusive to the rest of the property. Sure. I mean, we can certainly you know, talk to them about getting more information for what they would envision there. It's, it's just not part of what we're you know, proposing with our site plan right. as far as our piece of the project. Um, I mean, if you're talking about access points, I don't think that's a, I mean, to me, that would be something we could, could resolve pretty easily, showing where the access to those out parcels would be off of our entrances. Um, but as far as what they're gonna actually put there, uh, that's undetermined at this point. Um, right, that's, and, yeah. that's, and we understand that, but yeah. what we're looking for is the connectivity, right. so there's not additional requests for curb cuts on the right. UFO, Highway I, 6. I think that is the intention. Um, so if we need to we need to discuss that further and yeah. present something else, I think we can do that. <clears throat> That's what we would like to see. Okay. I think I will just say something. Yeah, that was one of our recommendations in, in the traffic study was that, you know, these be used for any fur further development along that corridor so that we don't have someone coming in wanting another access on Highway 6. I can't speak for the rest of the uh, group, but uh, I, I think most of us uh, like everything you have here. I think we would just like to see a, a master plan uh, of of the connectivity, like like you said, you had included in traffic study and so forth. And just wondered if uh, we could ask you to bring that back and, and then let us let us prove it. I, I think that's okay. we're more concerned about for the Definitely. for I, I guess really and truly it's it's for the basics of the traffic uh, on, on curb cuts and for the owner's protection too for whatever he wants to build in these other areas to be able to to, to connect yeah good morning i'm tom wangard i represent the owners the owner is uh be 86 years old tomorrow that's my mother and uh, right yeah she has a partner that has alzheimer's and wants to get this project done too but uh, as far as that piece below the down near the intersection of Old Cherokee and number six. They, it was only a four and a half acre usable parcel before they, and they have put their retention pond down there now. And it's, it's really a very small piece of property that's usable at this stage. There's only 50 feet that's usable on Old Cherokee uh, going out toward the rest home. So uh, really, that, I think that's only good for signage at this stage. And, widens out as you go up it makes it usable but uh, there's certainly going to have to be an entrance on the bottom of one driveway but uh, I don't anticipate there being more than one business down there so. <coughs> I don't know what three parcels really you're talking about there's, there's a parcel behind it that's uh, uh, across the creek put, put that back up please. can you put the map back up it's the, it's the parcel, the three parcels that's above the second entrance into the uh, complex here, so above I, the dark green. Can I bring this up? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. So the connectivity. We would like to see this included in your part and how this is going to access yeah. this. Because we've got a stream here, and I was talking about two more concerns. Please don't stand up. This is not in the way of the thing. What I would suggest here. Can you get all these? Yeah, you got a turn. Sorry. We just need to see that. I thought that was cool. All right, so he stated that that is not owned by the winger. By the family. By the Can you restate what you just said, please, sir, for the record? Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, the three parcels that are to the north of the colored out parcels that were shown on the slide are not controlled by the seller. Okay. okay. Which you are, which you are willing to in the traffic study. But we, we would be willing to stub an entrance off of that drive to those parcels in the event that they come before you in development and they could use our access. Okay. I'll 
All right. Any further questions? I would make a motion, Mr. Chairman, that we approve the uh, plan with the intentions of the stubbing of that one piece of property just for them to have access. four parcels that you're going to address on your agenda are the parcels associated with this project or okay. annexation. So that's where it was on. Okay. Um, the largest one is PLCW Trust, uh, which owns 58.7 acres and um, at the intersection of North Lake Drive and Old Cherokee, and they've petitioned to annex 55.8 acres. There's a small section of 2.9 acres that's south of this location that has the same tax map number. That's where the discrepancy is. I think Mr. Kaufman asked about that last time. Um, this is one of the four parcels included in the project we've been discussing. Um, properties in town near this one are zoned protected residential, high density residential, general commercial, and limited commercial. North Lake Drive is classified as an arterial road and Old Cherokee is classified as a collector road. Due to the intended use of the property, the recommended zoning is to split zone it with a combination of high density residential, general commercial, and limited commercial classifications as shown on the attached exhibit, which would be this one. Uh, portion of the property would also need a planned unit special overlay um, for the project to move forward as it's been submitted. And the recommended classification for North Lake Drive is an arterial and the recommended classification for Old Cherokee Road is a collector. The map that I've submitted in your packet, the uh, bright yellow is protected residential. That's on the other side of the creek up against uh, the neighborhood. The uh, darker yellow is the high density residential where the apartment will go. The um, dark red here is uh, the general commercial. And then down here on the old Cherokee side would be limited commercial. That's what we're proposing with, with the planned unit overlay encompassing those parcels that are part of this project. And that would be consistent with this one and the other three annexations that we'll discuss. Okay. All right. Any questions? I have one. <clears throat> I believe we discussed last night that uh, the 2.9 acres being separated from this was on the same tax map number. That, that is correct. And who, who has the responsibility of separating that uh, or getting its own number uh, you said last night the property owner the property owner has has told me that they are going to get a different tax map number for that 2.89 acres but when we're uh, when uh, the town attorney's drafting the annexation petitions he goes by tax map number and deed information associated with that tax right, map number so right. there's yeah, so that, that's I, where there's discrepancies. Yeah, I, I, want, I would like to make sure that the what we're bringing in is okay. is the same as the tax map number. So whoever's got the responsibility, you got another month to work on it. Well, the annexation uh, I mean, is based on the deed information. 
and that 2.9 acres that we're talking about is separately delineated in the deed information. Oh, okay. Although it's under the same tax map. Yeah, okay. it's already separated. So, it, it, so that piece, just to specify what Roscoe said, that piece of property will have to come back to us when, if they ever do anything. They are not included in it, this today. It is not included in the annexation. If you, okay. you, you, can, you can kind of... I see that it's whited, yeah. whited this, out this, there. You can kind of see it on this map here. This, this is the 2.9 acres. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just recorded as a separate, under the same tax map number as this large parcel here. Okay. Deed separate. Though. It is delineated separately on yeah. the same deed. Yeah. Thank you. I move for recommendation. Zoning. Okay, we have a motion. Second. We have a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. All those opposed, be unanimous. I remember three. Uh, Georgia uh, Berger Winger owns two acres uh, associated with this four parcels for the apartment complex and the commercial out parcels. Again, property, properties are zoned general commercial North Lake Drive is classified as an arterial road and the recommendation is general commercial for this one as shown on that exhibit with the planned unit overlay. Questions? I move for recommendation, recommendation of zoning. <coughs> we have a motion and a second. Second. Have a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, put your right hand. All those opposed, unanimous. Item number four. Yeah. This will be the third of the four parcels associated with this project. It is 0.93 acres. Again, the uh, Zoning in the area is essentially the same, um, and the recommendation is to uh, zone it per the exhibit that's attached to it in your packet. Mm -hmm. All right. Any questions? Any questions? We have a motion. Motion to approve recommendation on zoning. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, Opposed? Item number four. Five. Five, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is the final piece in the four parcel puzzle. It's uh, owned by Wingard Family Properties. It's 0.56 acres. Again, the uh, zoning is essentially the same in the area. Uh, North Lake Drive is an arterial physical <coughs> collector, and the recommended zoning for this is as shown on the exhibit, um, general commercial, limited commercial, high density residential with a planned overlay, planned development overlay. Any questions? A recommendation? I move for approval. We have a motion. Second. We have a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, please raise your right hand. All opposed, it is unanimous. Thank you very much. Item number six. This one does not have anything to do with the apartment <laughs> complex. Extreme Holdings uh, LLC recently purchased 6.2 acres located in 300 block of Porsche Drive and has petitioned to annex the property. A towing and automotive repair business is being planned on the site. Properties in town near this one are zoned industrial and Porsche Drive is classified as a local road. And the uh, due to the surrounding conditions and the intended use, the same zoning and road classification is recommended for this property. I have a question. Yes, sir. Screening, proper screening for this facility will be more for landscaping. It's in an industrial area. It's an industrial, it's industrial area. Okay. It will have some, but industrial areas are. Landscaping will be up front. Questions? Mayor, motion. Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Any further questions? All in favor, please raise your right hand. Yes. All opposed? Yes. Please 
unanimous. Thank you very much. That concludes all of our new business. Um, Ms. Manis, good to see you. Thank you, sir. Good to see all of you. I'd like to say a few things. Well, we got a couple of things going on. First, thank you for everything that y'all do. Um, and I look forward to seeing all of you on October the 6th for the Boards and Commissions dinner. I hope you got your invitation. So, uh, also, the Lexington County Fire Service is hosting a Fallen Fireman 5K on October the 1st at 8 a.m. You can get information from fallenfireman5k.com. We are excited for the ribbon cutting for the Ice House Amphitheater. It's going to be on Tuesday, October the 11th at 10 a.m. So I hope you can join us for that Tuesday, October the 11th at 10 a.m. Um, for the ribbon cutting. And then on Saturday, October 15th, the Lexington Craft Beer Fest is going to be held at the Ice House. So um, the two, two activities that will be happening pretty soon at our amphitheater. Also, the town's first concert, the Downtown Jams, is October 27th from 6 to 9. It's a family-friendly concert that's free with the Root Doctors at our amphitheater. So please um, put those dates down and join us. And then on October the 25th, everyone always has a great time at the Police Department's Fall Fest. So I hope you'll join us here at the, com the Municipal Complex for the Police Department's Fall Fest. So thank you. Mr. Williams, good to see you. Thank you all for Anything you'd like to add? That's it. It's nice to cover it all. Mr. Cunningham, do you have anything? Good to see you. Just uh, we'll be bringing you some suggested provisions to the temporary sign ordinance based on the Supreme Court ruling that we discussed tonight. <coughs> Got some good input from you guys and uh, have a good idea of what direction to go, and we'll give you something you can work with. Good. Anybody else? All right. Um, any public comments? I don't think we have any. Um, do I hear a motion to adjourn? Motion. So moved. All right. Second. All right, we have a motion for adjournment of first and second. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Yep. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you for watching the Town of Lexington Planning Commission in action. This meeting was held at Town Hall at 8 a.m. Wednesday, September 1st, 21st, 2016. Recording this meeting will be aired several times this week on the Town's <coughs> Information Channel. I'm Frank Berry, your Vice Chairman. On behalf of the Town of Lexington Planning Commission and staff, I wish you a good day.